reconnect with uh, Melvin, and uh, let me just remind you, he's he's been fighting since 2002. He's got uh, 46 wins, 10 losses, and he's one of the most dangerous guys out there. Melvin, are you with us? Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, welcome to the show. We appreciate you taking the time to join us here. Hey, I only got nine losses, just so y'all know. Oh, okay, great. That's great. That's even better. Um, You made your debut uh, with the UFC in 2005 on The Ultimate Fighter Season 2. How did that experience change you as a fighter? Uh, it was it was cool. I mean, it was just a fun experience at the time. Um, I was already, um, you know, at that point I had already had about thirty something, thirty something fights, you know. So I already had the experience. I mean, it was just um, it was basically a dream come true. You know, I never really applied for the for the show. Um, they actually came, they came looking for me. So with that, you know, it was I think it was one of the best feelings in the world. Being that you know it was a childhood dream and. I now get to fight in the UFC, something I've been wanting to do as a kid. Well, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's fun to hear how it worked out, and they actually came to you. That's kind of neat. Now, after losing on the show, uh, were you surprised when they called you about fighting in the Ultimate Fighter 2 finale against Marcus Davis? Nah, man. Um, no, because even with the fight with Berkman, um, you know, they, they were already still considering uh, keeping me around. Um and I think they, they knew that I had a lot of potential and I had a good personality for the sport. Um, you know, and, and, and when the Bergman fight happened, I ended up like um, they were going to actually let me come back and fight again as an alternate, but my hand was broken, you know, so uh-huh. I ended up not being able to come back and, and, and compete. So, you know, had I been healthy, I probably would have been, they probably would let me back anyway. That, that would have been fun to see, really, because a lot of us were watching you and, and, and enjoying your time in, in The Ultimate Fighter and hoping that you would end up in the finale. But you did fight Marcus Davis. Was that a fight that was a turning point for you, or was it just another fight? No, nah, it was just another fight, man. I mean, Marcus is tough. He's, he's a really tough guy. But, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, man, I have a lot of experience, so I, I don't really go into the cage worrying about who's better or who's who 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 gives a a tougher um, a tougher challenge? You know, every everybody's tough in MMA. You know, that's that's just the nature of MMA. Um, if it was easy, everybody would be wanting to do it. You know what I mean? Sure. In two thousand eight, you had a torn ACL. No, that's wrong. I I never torn anything. Oh, you didn't. Okay, so. Damn, you guys got all y'all facts messed up. Oh, you know what? I got that off Wikipedia, so somebody must have put something down there that was uh, incorrect, and I apologize about that. Nope. Um, nope, I've never told her, I've never had a knee injury or anything. You better not jinx me, bro. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to see that happen. We want to see you come off with a victory. Looking back over your career, are there any fighters you'd like a rematch against? Um, yeah, I, def- I definitely like the Rich Clemente fight back. Um... I like the the Nate Diaz fight back, uh, the Josh Near fight. Um, pretty much, pretty much the the four fight, well, five fights now. The five fights I've lost in the UFC, I, w- I would want those back, you know. But I mean, for me, you know, it, it's about moving forward. Um, you know, whatever happens here, whoever I fight next, I just fight. You know, I, I'm one of those people where I, I don't really, um, you know, I really try not to look back. You know, I try to look forward. Well, I'll tell you, you know, one of the things that was so exciting was beginning in 2008, you went 8-1 and one before you were facing Joe Luzon. Um, and before, at that time, people were talking about you getting a title fight. But then you went into the fight with Luzon and lost in a relatively quick fashion. How did you uh, get over that and be able to move on? I know you seem like a fighter that is able to deal with this stuff fairly well. Um. It doesn't really bother me, man. I mean, you know, I, I don't think I lost anything from the Lozon fight. You know, I, I think um, I think everybody knows that, being the fact that, you know, I, I wouldn't be headlining a fight against Jim Miller live on FX for the first time had I lost anything, you know. Um, that probably would have been a fight they would have gave Lozon. Right. Um, but in all honesty, you know, not many people are excited about seeing a Joe Lozon and Jim Miller fight. You know, I, I think a lot of people have been wanting to see this Melvin and Jim fight for quite a quite a while now. And, and I think at the end of the day, the people who win here are the fans. Right. Well, you know, you are an exciting fighter, and that's what makes it fun for the 
uh, the, the listeners to be watching. Um, you're definitely considered one of the best lightweights out there. How important for you is this upcoming fight against Jim Miller? Uh, every, every fight is important, man. I mean, Jim Miller, you know, Jim Miller is a fight I've been wanting for a while because, you know, to me, he's one of the best. He's one of the best, best in our weight class. And, you know, I, I really look up to him as, as a fighter. You know, he brings it. He, he goes in for the kill. He reminds me a lot of myself. You know, he has that killer instinct. Not many guys, not many guys have that killer instinct. You're right because I mean he's got a nine and two record in the UFC. His only losses were to Gray Maynard and Ben Henderson, who are considered two of the top fighters in the division. But at the same time, when you get on a winning streak, I I definitely see you as having the potential to compete with the best of them as well. How do you prepare for a fight against somebody like Jim Miller? Um. The, the best thing you could do against a guy like Jim Miller is be very patient, and um, you know that's that's been my um, my key word, my my key goal, and uh, and all of my training for for the prepare for Jim is patience. Um, you know, it, with a guy like that, you got to have lack. You can't have mistakes like I made with Jim, with Lozon. I have to be mistake free, and you know, 15 minutes can feel like an hour. You know, with with having to do all the right things to make sure you don't get caught by something silly. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the fight, and I'm definitely more patient than I was for the uh, Lozon fight. Now, do you consider yourself more of a striker than a grappler? Of course. Um, Of course, yeah. I mean, I would say I'm more of a striker. I mean, Miller's... I think everybody would agree with that. Yeah, Miller's a little bit of a well-rounded guy, and so if you can phase him that's that's to me where i see you being able to take the fight to him in the striking arena but you you're also a guy with a lot of strength how would you say you fare up on the strength uh scale with a guy like i, I think i'm stronger I, I i think i'm the bigger stronger guy um i'm normally bigger than most guys i fight other than um gleason t-ball he was the, probably the only guy that was that out that that was stronger than me and i was still able to I was still able to maneuver him and move him around, you know, quite a bit. Now, how much will your weight differ from the time you weigh in, and you're you're weighing in at 155, right, to the time yeah, of the I'll fight be itself? At 155. Right now, I'm about 175. So, but when you go into the ring, how much does your weight go up from the time I'll you weigh back, in? I'll be back to my full weight. Oh wow, that's that's a huge change in just a day and a half. Yeah. Well, that's why you have nutritionists and we hire doctors to come in. Like, it's, it's definitely a procedure. And, um, it, it's, a, it's a certain procedure you have to do to take the weight off, and it's also a certain procedure to uh, putting the weight back on. Right. So, and, and being healthy and doing it the right way. You know, um, and I, I haven't, I've never heard anybody do anything illegal to put weight back on, but I'm pretty sure there's things out there, you know, that you know, nobody's ever found out about. But, you know, you, you try to keep it um, prof- as professional as possible so that you don't get people with the crazy thoughts like, oh, how do you gain all that weight? How, why is he so strong? Right. You know, and then, you know, with talk like that, then comes steroid talk. You know, that's, that's basically what happens with sports. Right. What What are your thoughts as a fighter when you see the situation with Anthony Johnson? I mean, coming in 12 Man, pounds? It, it, was, it was tough to see, you know. Um, you know I, I just became a part of the, the Black Zillions. Uh, recently, and uh, I actually trained with Anthony for that camp. Um, you know, it's it's tough, man. But you know what? At the end of the day, we're all we're all adults, and and we're the bosses. You know what I mean? And yeah. people have to realize that you know your coaches, your agents, and everybody they work for you. You know, you have to. At the end of the day, you're the president of your company. You have to make an executive decision. You know, and um, you know, should he have drank in the, the fluids? I don't know. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and judge Anthony. Also, sure. you know, if, if he was if he was hurt and he was sick and he needed it, then he needed it. You know, what I mean, you can't you can't mess with health because it had you know it, it could have been worse had he not drank the the fluids. You know, he he probably possibly couldn't couldn't even fought. You know, what sure. I mean? Well, and, you know, it could have been a lot worse. You know, I'll just leave it at that. But, sure. Well, you know, a lot of us were at disappointed. The end of the day, man, we we have to we have to sometimes make decisions that we don't want to make. Sure. A lot of us were disappointed because Anthony Johnson has brought a lot of excitement to a lot of fights. We've enjoyed seeing him fight, and it's unfortunate that it didn't really work out because I almost felt like he really didn't have much of a chance of 
I don't mean by winning the fight, but winning at all, because even if he had beaten Belfort, then there'd be this asterisk saying, hey, he was way overweight. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean it, was, it was a lose-lose situation, right. man, and my head goes off to Anthony because I know how bad he trained, man. He trained hard for that fight, yeah. and he looked, he looked great for his training camp. Like, everything was, everything was in place. And it was just uh it was just a bitter end, man. But you know, and, and now I'm finding out recently that they just let him go. So I mean, you know, that comes with the job. But, but a guy like Anthony, he'll bounce back, man. He, he's a strong guy. He's very strong willed, and you know, he, he's he's he got the heart of a lion, man. So he, you know, he'll go and possibly beat a couple of guys, and they'll let him right back in, man. But you know, he he's definitely got to think about who he hires to do his nutrition and stuff like that. Because sure. You know, at the end of the day, man, those people hold the key to, to your success sometimes. Sure. Well, we're looking forward to you having a lot of success down the road. If you get past Miller, who would you like to fight down the road? Um, for me, man, um, you know, it, it's whoever next. Um, I, don't, I don't see myself getting a title shot. Um, I've come past Miller. I don't see that happening. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe another strike at, uh, at Nate, you know, Maybe another strike at him, you know, after he beat Cowboy, he's definitely up there in the rankings now. So, um, you know, that, that'll that definitely be a different fight from last time as well. So That would uh, be a maybe, good one to maybe see. Maybe Nate, you know, I, I mean, that's right now on top of my head. I like to fight the guys that are at the top and that, that are making noise that, that's getting close to the belt. You know, I, I don't want to fight guys that fights don't ma- they, the fight don't matter. You know, if you, you fight sure. somebody and the fight don't make sense. At this point in my career, it's a waste of time. Sure. How can our listeners follow you? Do you have a website or a Twitter account? Uh, yeah, you can go to melvingillard.com for my website. Um, on my Facebook page, you just punch in Melvin Gillard. But I'm getting re- I have a new fan page up, but um, I'm getting ready to delete my personal page because I, I, I overloaded it with, with fans, and I don't have room for my personal sure. friends. Um, and then you can also find me on Twitter at, at young underscore underscore assassin. And uh, all of my photos always have pictures of me and my wife. So everybody will know who, what the real pages are when they see pictures of me and the wife there. That's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you joining us on the show, Melvin. And I'd like to personally thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we wish you the best of success in the upcoming bout. And we hope to talk to you again after the victory. Thank you, guys, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Well, thank you so much. You take care. That was Melvin Gillard. And again, he will be fighting Jim Miller at UFC on FX on January 20th, this coming Friday in Nashville, Tennessee. Stay tuned for discussions on the latest news in the world of MMA and more on the upcoming UFC on FX. We'll be right back after these messages. Hand-ruled in South Florida, made from the finest tobacco leaves from around the world. Maya cigars are made by real Cuban tabaqueros in the one and only cigar factory located right here in West Palm Beach, Florida. Since 1896, the Rodriguez family from Cuba has made fine cigars. Trained in Cuba, Rodriguez personally hand-selects all his own aged tobacco leaves. Superb Cuban seed, Dominican-grown cigar tobacco is smooth to the end. This sacred combination of aged, pristine tobacco with over 100 years of Cuban cigar experience is now what we proudly call a Maya. The Maya family guarantees the freshness and quality of your cigars, and we hand inspect and select every cigar before packaging for shipment. We offer you the selection of cigars made the same day of shipment or from our reserve from Maya's humidor. Each cigar gets the attention of an expert cigar maker. Maya handmade cigars are located at 927 Belvedere Road, West Palm Beach, Florida. Call us at 561-659-3202. That's 659-3202. Or find them on the web at www.mayacigars.com. Sweet Sports and Entertainment not only produces the program MMA Today, this company is a complete sports, arts, and entertainment management consulting and promotion firm. SSE provides pro-athlete artists, entertainer management, and agent services. 
contract negotiations, marketing, merchandising, and endorsement contracts, event planning, management, and promotion, media, entertainment, management, and consulting. SSC is known for relationships with the financial services industry for investment services, financial management services, retirement and estate planning services, not to mention that SSE President Jim Sweet is a practicing attorney who is a member of the Entertainment, Arts, and Sports Law and Family Law Divisions of the Florida Bar, licensed in the states of Florida and Montana. So if you're an athlete, artist, or entertainer and are looking for professional representation, please contact SSE via their website, www.sweetse.com, or by phone at 561-253-4867. Listen. Welcome back. You're listening to MMA Today, and this segment is being brought to you by PennyJoeMMA.net, a place for all the latest news, the best in MMA gear and apparel, and some of the top articles in MMA. Check it out at PennyJoeMMA.net. We want to get back to the UFC Brazil. Uh, there was some awesome fights there, and we didn't quite get a chance because we had the interview with Melvin, which was awesome, to talk about the two main events, Vitor Belfort and Anthony Johnson. And I appreciate what Melvin had to say. He had trained with uh, Anthony. And, you know, to be honest with you, when a guy hits something like that, it does, as an MMA fan, I feel I feel it in my heart. Because here's a guy who, man, he looked like he was in such good shape. Um, he's a good fighter. He's an exciting fighter. I really thought he was going to come in and, and really kick Belfort's butt, to be honest with you. But it wasn't that. It was this whole overweight thing that really marred the whole situation. Because had he come in on weight, fought Belfort and lost, even in the exact same fashion, Dana White would have come back and said, well, you know, Belfort's a good fighter. Belfort is top of the food chain. But when he comes in, this is the third time he didn't make weight. Uh, you know, he's lost two of his last three fights, and now he's cut from the UFC. Uh, I, I hope what Melvin had to share is true. He goes out, gets picked up by another organization, puts a couple of impressive victories behind him, two or three, and then uh, ends up back in the UFC. Or if he gets picked up by either Strike Force or Bellator, maybe he ends up in a title fight there, like Keith Jardine, although that was kind of disappointing how Keith Jardine fared out in his title fight and and it looks pretty apparent that Jardine is not the same Jardine that we saw in the UFC. It's amazing how some fighters have much more resiliency like a Melvin Gillard who's got 60 fights under his belt and has been around uh, for 10 years and then some of the other fighters that rise so quickly and then they're gone their skills disappear um, but Vitor Belfort won the day uh, I was very happy for him. Um, he he had been through a lot during his career, losing his sister and the whole issue there, and fighting in his hometown. It was just a, a, a joy to see him get the victory that he, he so longed for and desired. And now they're going to have uh, the ultimate fighter, Brazil, and he's going to be one of the coaches, which is going to be awesome. I mean, when I was there at UFC 141, I asked them, uh, about were they going to show the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil in Portuguese so that the Brazilians themselves could could check it all out because they're going to have all Brazilian fighters. That would be awesome. And then you've got, for the two coaches, Vanderlei Silva and Vitor Belfort, facing off against one another in a rematch that was first fought many years ago, and Belfort knocked out uh, Vanderlei in less than a minute. So that was extremely exciting. Uh, Belfort got a victory. He was very appreciative. He was very humble, and he was excited about it. Uh, the headline fight of the night, what can you say? There were a lot of people that thought maybe Mendez had the wrestling skills to pull it off. But uh, unfortunately, the fight went one second short of getting into the second round. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but we do have our second guest for the evening. Uh, his name is LeVar Johnson. He's got a record of 15-5. and five. He's going to be fighting Joey Beltran on UFC on Fox 2, January 28th in my hometown, Chicago, Illinois. 
Uh, so, uh, LeVar, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing? Hey, it's wonderful having you on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, right, let me well, ask thank you, you for having me. I saw an interesting fact about your record. Not one of your 20 fights has gone to a decision. Now, do you think it's just because heavyweights tend to hit harder and more of their fights don't go to decision, or is that something that you just try and plan on? Hey, I want to see this fight end early. I think I uh, hit a little harder than the average bear. That's what I think it is. Uh, when I start landing my bombs on people, then uh, they tend to, you know, uh, give up. It takes a lot out of them. So sure, I finish a lot. Most, most of my fights, or either that or get finished, <laughs> either or, you know, I haven't been knocked out anything yet, but um, sure, everything's been going good. Well, that's that's awesome to hear. Um, the funny thing that really kind of struck me almost in a humorous way, you actually started your career out in the WEC. And it's funny because later on, just before the WEC was absorbed into the um, UFC, it didn't have any of the heavier weight classes. It only had the lighter weight classes. What was it like when you first got into the WEC with the heavier weight classes? It, it was great. It was awesome. You know, um we, it was a good show. WEC before uh, they bought it was uh, you could see the same fighters in Pride and UFC at the in um, the WEC. And, you know, I'm from Fresno um, in California, and um, the show was like maybe an hour away from me in Lemoore. They used to have the shows over there, so I, I was a big fan, and uh, it, it was just an awesome show. You know, you could see all your favorite fighters um, like an hour away from me. So well, that's it was great. A good show. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, how important is cardio for a guy your size? Uh, it, it's, it's, at this level, it means everything, you know. If you, if you can't breathe, then you, you can't fight, and that's a dangerous with you know, being a heavyweight. You know, you, you can't defend yourself, and you get caught with one of them bombs, and it, that's all she wrote. I mean, sometimes we see some of the heavier weight guys, they're not expecting the fight to get into the second, third, or third round, or sometimes even in the main events, fourth or fifth round. These guys are so dead exhausted, it's almost like uh, one of the fans could go in and, and pin them in a wrestling match. But um, is, is that where you say, look, i got to be prepared for anything? Yeah, I, I try to, but like like you said, it's, it's heavyweights and we're going hard. It's a lot more muscle mass that uh, you need to feed that oxygen to. So um, you, you, we're going to get tired faster than the lightweights. We're not going to be able to move as quick and, and as much and, and go along. But, uh, you know, like other than the, heavy, the lightweights, you know, one punch can end it all for us. So sure. give and take. With the heavyweight. Now, with the lighter weight, sometimes the, the difference in a weight class is 10 pounds. In the heavyweight division, you've got a 60-pound range from 205 to 265. How much do you really concern yourself with your weight as you go from match to match? Is that something that you have to work on, or is it something you just say, hey, look, you know, as long as I'm under 265, I'm A-OK? Or do you really try to get your fat levels low? Um. You know, I try to I try to stay faster than the heavyweights. You know, I think the bigger you are, the slower you're going to be. So I'm I'm at a good weight um, right now. I'm 255. I'm usually like 248 in the fighting. You know, I'm not too light and I'm not too big. So um, yeah, I just try to stay like keep my cardio up and try to stay faster to have the advantage of, of moving. Now you're you're coming off right now. You've got two losses in a row. Um, looking at your next fight, how crucial is that in terms of, do you think that's going to put your UFC career on the line? Because the talk out there is it's three strikes and you're out. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to put me in. I'm not too worried about it. You know, I have two two losses, and I, I want to win. I'm not putting any extra pressure on myself, but um, the way I look at it is I have nothing to lose. You know, I'm going out there and uh, just give everything I have and uh, leave it all in the cage with no regrets. So if I do lose, you know, at least I could say I gave it my all and, you know, I made it to the big show. And, um, you know, I have nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, absolutely. But that's not going to be the case. I'm going right. with a W on this one, too. Two, two in a row is too, too many. Sure. Now, do you find that uh, the fans are more excited about the heavyweight division? Oh, for sure. You know, um, you know like you've seen when Brock hit Alistair, it's just a little simple jab and split his eye open. 
So, you know, it's exciting. Everybody wants to see somebody go to sleep, and that majority of the time, you know, that's what's going to happen. Sure. How much preparation do you do in terms of uh, looking at your opponent and figuring out what their strengths and weaknesses are watching their fights? Um, I try to go on YouTube and see what I can, you know. Um, there's not too much stuff with the uh, UFC. Like my opponent, Joey, I can't see too much of his... his, uh, his, his Later flight fights, but um, you know, I try, I try to see, try to find little habits and how they move and whatnot. But there's not a whole lot for me to go on unless I, you know, watch his fights. Now, with an opponent like that, do you look to keep it standing? Do you look to take it to the ground? How do you look for a fight like that? I try to keep all my uh, fights standing. You know, um, if, if with Joey, it's going to be. Um, I, I think we're going to both be standing and. It's going to be a good little slugfest. He likes to stand and bang, and, you know, he's a, he's a tough guy. He, he brings it. He's a good cardio, and, you know, I don't he, I'm, he's going to keep coming and keep coming, so I'm going to do the same thing. Well, I'm really looking forward to the fight. It sounds like uh, it's going to be two guys giving it their all, and we're really looking forward to you kind of get, getting back on the winning track and getting yourself in contention. If you get past Beltron, who would you like to look forward to possibly facing down the road? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. As long as, you know, I, I'm just, I would just like to have a W in the UFC, you know. So uh, anybody is, is an honor for me to fight in the UFC at that level. So there's nobody on in my radar, but, you know, I just want to climb up. I would like to fight a big-name guy, you know, just to have bragging rights and say, you know, I fought somebody yeah. that was really great, you know. Well, you know, a couple of guys that come to mind for me is I'd love to see you take on a guy like Matt Mitrione or even a Travis Brown. I don't know how that sits with you because you know those guys better than I do in terms of how you feel you match up and where their skills are versus uh, your skills. I, I, I think both of those guys are tremendous athletes, and I would love to fight either one of them. Yeah, well, that's that. If I was a matchmaker, that's where I'd put you on one of those two cards because I think you do have some good skills, and you can be an exciting fighter. Uh, do you have any shout-outs you'd like to give before we go to a commercial break? Um, yeah, I just want to thank uh, thank you guys for having me. You know, uh, I'm just out here training hard, trying to do my job, and trying to give you guys the best show I can. So. Well, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, you're one of these guys who's in there giving it your all, and you're really there making the fight game for the fans. You know, not everybody can be a Uriah Faber or a Brock Lesnar, you know, and it, it's guys like you that create the exciting fights, that create those situations where we look back and say, ah, I remember seeing this exciting move or that exciting move. So we really appreciate you being in there, and that's where I'm hoping down the road you're going to see uh, a couple of strings of victories and get you some better fighters so that you can really climb the ranks of recognition. So we're definitely going to be watching for your next fight. Do you have a web, web page or Twitter account where we can follow you? Uh, LeVar Johnson on the Twitter. Okay. That sounds great. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, LeVar. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us here tonight. We wish you the best of success in your upcoming bout, and we look forward to seeing you much more in the near future. 